Hi, I'm Alex and welcome back to Dreams of Green. So here we are in Kyogle, Northern New South Wales, Australia, and I'm sitting next to our dam. Um, and you can see things aren't looking too great at the moment. It's been an incredibly dry winter, one of the driest on record. And um, on top of that, we've had some really early uh, scorching days in early spring between 35 and 40 degrees and things aren't looking too good with our water situation. So I wanted to talk to you about why um, my strategy was when we planted our um, kind of long-term timber and rainforest, why we planted it with no irrigation, and also talk to you about the food forest and why I was really adamant that it was going to be a food forest of really tough species that weren't reliant on external irrigation. So let's go for a bit of a tour and I'm going to show you which species are thriving in these drought conditions and what my strategy is going to be moving forward. Okay, so here we are at our main food forest system and in front of me here there are actually two kilometres of tree rows that have got a mix of, you can see some native, Australian natives as support trees, we've got some nitrogen fixing trees and other fast growing support trees in amongst all of our target species such as mango, Grummy Charmer, which is a tropical cherry and is absolutely delicious. And we've got some ice cream bean and guava and fajoas. So a big strategy here is, as I showed you with the dam, we weren't able to rely on irrigation. We don't have a bore. And as I pan around, you'll see over the road here is a creek and we do have access to the creek. However, at the moment, it's a series of puddles already. Um, so we knew that relying on any sort of irrigation for this food forest system was not a viable option for us unless we installed a bore and set up irrigation systems or dug swales. So what we've done is we've planted all the trees on contour. You can see at the moment they're being protected from the scorching sun with these grass rows. And then what would happen is we'd get these heavy downpours, the rain would sheet off the hill and go straight onto the road and we'd lose it. So having these grass rows on contour really helps slow the flow of water off the hill and concentrate it into the tree rows where it is really needed. So one of the things you'll notice is these acacias that are getting up. So these are a fantastic um, Australian native and they also fix nitrogen. So one of my strategies is you'll see there's a row of acacia here and then we've got one, two, three rows with different guilds and then back to the acacias. So what I'm not happy about with these three rows is I really need to fill them with more support species. So some of the support species that are doing well so far, this is a tipu tree, so Pride of Bolivia. It's a nitrogen fixer and super tough and hardy. Um, we've got eucalypts, will, which will be heavily pruned for mulch and that will help stimulate growth with the trees around them. And we've got an albizia here. So you can see that th this is already over two meters tall and that's um, starting to get some beautiful fresh green growth as well. Um, but the problem is, compared to this row where we're creating much needed shade to help reduce the effects of evaporation, these three rows here don't have enough shade except for the grass. And as I've mentioned in previous videos, the goal is not to keep this grass here. This is just as a nursing uh, mechanism, if you like, with these baskets protecting the young trees. So you can see here we've got a pomegranate being protected by the grass and I've planted pomegranates because they are drought hardy but also seem to cope with the humid summers as well. Um, so if we continue along here, so you can see with these Acacia fimbriata, they're actually, the seeds are starting to burst open with the heat and they are ready to harvest. So today I'm actually going to collect a heap of the acacia seeds because as I said, even if we do go through a drought and even if we only get things like the acacias, the eucalypts um, and the other hardy pioneer species that survive, at least we're creating that foundation for uh, the food forest. So even if I do lose a few fruit trees, at least we're getting this system established. Um, and that's going to create these beautiful microclimates and reduce the temperature extremes that are such a problem here. So if we go for a walk as well, just to have a look at which other fruit trees are thriving, the bush lemon here. 
So the bush lemon is coping really, really well. And again, this was watered during a wet season when we had rain and I have not watered it since. So the bush lemon is one that's thriving. Let's have a look here. This is a persimmon actually. So it's just starting to get its leaves now. So that seems to be coping quite well, the persimmon. Now the silky oaks are also a real standout. They are so tough and the silky oaks are often used overseas actually to help protect uh, coffee plantations. Um, they're also a fantastic long-term timber species. So you can see if I pan across, there's just some remnants over the creek of the golden flowers. So these are the silky oaks. They naturally pop up in the paddock here. So those are also a fantastic pioneer species. And then after two years, the pecans are starting to really thrive. But again, I've planted pecans out on the front nature strip over here. Any pecans not surrounded by grass are still just bare sticks. However, the pecans surrounded by the grass have beautiful lush growth and are thriving. So now you've seen some of the species that are thriving despite these kind of drought conditions, which will probably continue to worsen moving into um, November, October, November. Now what we're going to do, you can see these acacia seeds are starting to pop open. So I'm going to harvest a heap of these uh, just for ease and uh, less labor, uh, less labor intensive method because I have thousands upon thousands of these all over the property. I'm going to start sprinkling the seed in these tree rows to help act as a support tree. So when we get rain, hopefully they will pop up by themselves. I'm also going to show you my method where I scarify the seed, soak them and propagate them in the nursery. So that way I've, um, I've scattered the seed and I've got back up in the nursery just in case these seeds don't take. So and I just can't believe the difference to standing under the shade of this acacia compared to out in the open. There's a huge temperature difference. So one of the things when you're thinking of self-seeding trees, support trees in your agroforestry or syntropic rows, you want to observe what's naturally popping up by itself. So here's a pigeon pea. If I pan over here, I can see this pigeon pea naturally popping up. See how it's popping up naturally in the thick grass? So I know that I can just scatter this seed in my grass rows, as you can see below, and that should, when we get rain, it should just pop up naturally. That is going to save me so much time with propagating in the nursery and then digging holes. So because we have such an abundance of pigeon pea now, this is a really efficient way of getting fast growing shade and mulch. The other one that I've observed is this wonderful tephrosia, which I've done a video how it's a natural insecticide, especially against the red shoulder beetle. And that is drought tolerant, really fast growing, great shade. The birds love um, you know, sheltering in the shade. And here we go. So this is just observing it naturally popping up. The ground, I'm not sure if you can see, the ground is pretty much rock hard and it's quite dry, yet with the grass around it, I don't need to dig a hole. I can just scatter those seeds and that is going to come up naturally in the tree row. So I'm going to collect a heap of this seed and the pigeon pea now and go and spread it in my tree rows. So I've gone and collected a big bowl of pigeon pea seed and tephrosia seed, as well as a bowl of the acacia fimbriata seed. Now I'm going to go and scatter that seed along my tree rows. And I'm really excited to give you an update in a few months time after the start of our wet season and report back um, how they've fared being sown directly into the long grass. I really hope the acacia seed will uh, sow directly. And I will do a full tutorial in a separate video of how to propagate the acacia from seed uh, in the nursery. That's going to be my backup plan um, just in case the direct sow method doesn't work. So there you have it. That's my strategy for um, coping with drought conditions is to really go heavy on the um, drought tolerant support species for fast growing shade and also to create much needed chop and drop mulch. Thanks so much for watching and if you've enjoyed please subscribe and share with friends and family and we'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.